What's up, everybody? Welcome to the Zach Dressler Show. I am Zach Dressler. Thank you for joining. Welcome, new subscribers. Thanks for tuning in. Old subscribers, I really appreciate it. Uh, if you like what you're hearing, please uh, hit the uh, subscribe button on the YouTube channel. You could also tell your friends, maybe tell one or two and have them tell one or two, and this way we can get more and more subscribers. But you can also check out this audio version uh, on iTunes, on Spotify, and Amazon, and Stitcher. We're everywhere. We're everywhere. We're everywhere now. We're li- I'm. We're literally <laughs> everywhere. Um, yeah, word of mouth though. Word of mouth you know, is the way to go though. You know, I can Dressler show. It's a revolution, and <laughs> we need uh, soldiers in the army. Yeah, I mean, uh, sure. I'm. I, I would love an army, but I'm not gonna like you know put them you know send them off anywhere. Like it's just an army to hang out with. You right. Know? Well, you know, like you, radio shows have armies, right? Mm-hmm. That's the typical thing of a. I mean, not necessarily. This isn't a radio program, but right. It's a. Well, it's a. It's a, a staple of radio broadcasting, sure. podcasting. I would say. Yep. Um, something that you're familiar with. Yeah, in yeah, radio, yeah. Right. And I'll mobilize my audience once they get big enough. <laughs> but uh, now, thank you for joining. Uh, I'm excited about today's show. We got a really fun guest, uh, a good friend of mine, Tristan Hill is joining the program. Uh, he's the director, he's a writer, producer, content maker, entrepreneur, sneakerhead gamer, former OG Buzzfeeder where OG like you know, Buzzfeeder. That's where, you know, Indy and I started, that's where we met. Uh, I met him there. Um, we're going to cover an array of topics with him. It's going to be a lot of fun. I'm excited to chat with him. It's been a minute since I've hung out with him and talked with him. So, excited that he's joining the program. How you doing, Indy? Doing good now that I recorded the podcast. <laughs> so we recorded. We started recording this intro uh, probably about eight minutes in. We were twelve in. minutes in, and then we were we were having a good banter. And Indy goes, uh, "Hey, um, I am it's so sorry." <laughs> but you were on a roll. You were really on a roll. About I forgot how, to how hit the audio. <laughs> yeah. He recorded the video, but not the audio. Yeah, and that's fine. You know, we were we were on a roll of good things. We were talking about a lot of good stuff, which we'll talk about now anyway. Yeah. Well, we were talking about complacency, and I think it set in a bit. Yeah, three absolutely. weeks goes by, and you don't you don't exercise that muscle. Right. You get lazy. Right. Well, to, exactly. to you know, to you to let everybody know, we don't record this on a weekly on a weekly basis. Oh, cats out of the bag. Cats out of the bag. Now <laughs> we do not record this on. A, I, I don't know many that do. Maybe plenty. I should that's not true. I know plenty that record on a weekly basis. Some on a daily basis. Well, some shows are, are current events based. Right. Right. You exactly. gotta have it. So they yeah. have to. Yeah. But with us, we're not really, we're, we're you know, we, you know. We're a little bit of this, a little bit of that. A little bit of that, a little bit of currents, not currents, you know. Uh, but, you know, we did take, it was supposed to be only two weeks off. We had enough in the bank, but it ended up being three because some people had to postpone. Not a big deal. But now we're back. You know who you are. And <laughs> you know who you are. You're listening to this podcast. I know it. But we're back. And, uh, you know, just piggybacking off the last episode, episode 11, um, wanted to talk about the Everything bagel ice cream that uh, I got for us from Jenny's ice cream. So, uh, Indy's girlfriend Tori uh, said, said to Indy that you got us, we us guys should try uh, this everything bagel ice cream that was that was that's from Jenny's. Uh, Jenny's Jenny's splendid ice cream, and I love Jenny's. It's fantastic, but that ice cream was doo-doo. shout out Jenny. Love Jenny. shout out Jenny. We love yeah. your we love your ice creams in general, but that ice cream was doo doo. Uh, it's good marketing. It's, it's good, good marketing. marketing. I, you know, people, I'm sure tons of people bought it. Um, but it just wasn't for me. It just, it, it, there was too much going on and it just, it didn't taste well. However, my girlfriend, Carrie tried it and Stephen Farrell, who's been a part of this program oh, twice the infamous, now, yeah. the infamous Stephen Farrell, he tried it as well and they liked it like by itself, by itself. Like they, they thought were, it was interesting. Well, it's definitely different. But they liked it. They didn't crush it. They're like, no, I could eat this. And you know what they said? They said the same thing we said, which was maybe this would taste better on a bagel. Right. I think that's a natural response. And I... I, I think I think it's only because your brain wants it to be. Sure. You know, because savory on ice cream, it could it's it's a teeter-totter. You got, you got maple bacon, the teeter goes that way. Right. You got... Everything bagel gra- gravel and the ice cream, it goes. The yeah, other. I mean, no one's yeah. asking. No one's asking for that. You know what I mean? Like we know what tastes good. We know like bacon and ice cream tastes good. No one's asking for biscuits, gravy, and sausage <laughs> in an ice cream. Do you know what I mean? Like yeah. I'm not asking for like you know the moons over my hammy from fucking Denny's to be mashed up into an ice cream. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Like I don't I need that. I, I don't you. need that in my life. Like I I wouldn't put I wouldn't put ice cream on a bagel. 
I, I wouldn't. But it's not you. No, you wouldn't. But you would put everything bagel ice cream spread. Would I you? Call it a sp- I call would it. A, you I though? call it a cold schmear. A cold schmear. I don't know if I would. I don't know if I would do it. Are there cold? No, there are. There are lots of cold schmear. Most no schmears. Are cold. All schmears. All are schmears cold. are cold. There's no warm schmear. That would be. Uh, uh, that'd be a queso. Yeah, I, and, and, and then and that you know what, and you know what, queso would probably or taste jelly. decent. Well, jelly's not warm. No, that's what I'm saying. That'd be a cold schmear. Oh yeah, a yeah, cold right, schmear. Right, yeah, right. yeah, yeah, sure. Yeah, it wouldn't be warm. Yeah, but and a queso would probably be pretty good on a bagel, actually. Um, a bagel. But yeah, I, I'm not into it. Uh, it's not. It's not my thing. Um, it's sure fun though. Go it's back still, to it's watch still the chilling in my fridge. It's still yeah. in my fridge, collecting frostbite. Yeah, it's episode eleven. It's right here. In the card that just popped up on there, and I just broke the mic. <laughs> oh, really quickly, a uh, bunch of things about uh, popping up over here above my head. Um, one of the things that Tristan Hill, our guest, is uh, he had a great uh, short uh, film. It won a couple of awards um, called Foxes. You could watch it here. We'll link it there. Check it out. It's brilliant. It's fantastic. I really enjoy it. We'll get into it. Yeah. We'll get more into that. Um, <laughs> That's short with him uh, when he comes on here shortly. But uh, I did want to tell, switch gears real quick from the everything bagel ice cream to just a topic, I, you know, I realized uh, that's been, you know, it's a social media topic. And uh, yesterday, I don't know if you saw this, Indy, um, Instagram. So Instagram for the past two years, I, mean, I think it was past a year or two years, they've been talking about doing away with the likes. People who are not you can't see how many people liked, yeah, you know. Yeah, I've, I've so, for example, this. like, you know, if I have a post, you know, it will say, you know, at Indy Fawcett and at Carrie K. Kabanoff liked like your post this. and right. 375 others. You see the views. Likes. You just don't see the likes. You say who liked it. And then if you want to, you can tap right tap it and then it'll give you the right but it does it still doesn't give you a number only the right. person that sees but even the person that they have to see it to see the number mm-hmm. the the person mm-hmm. that's viewing it can't see it so it'll say like Indy Fawcett and others right. Right. and i and i and it was interesting i saw a lot of people lose their shit online and it wasn't and instagram did it as like a trial they weren't supposed to really involve that many people involved in this it was like a bug that apparently that they needed to fix because a lot of people were experiencing it and a lot of people lost their shit about it. A lot of people were like, I'm an influencer. I, you know, my, my revenue comes from likes. You know, this is how it works. And, you know, I, I thought it was interesting. I think it's an interesting route to try. Why not give it a try? You know what I mean? That, that was on accident? That's what they said. They said we've been testing a new experience to hide likes on feed posts. We unintentionally added more people to the test today. Which was a bug. Oh. We're fixing this issue and restoring the like counts to those people as soon as possible. And they fixed it, I think, within a couple hours. Don't worry, everybody. We're going to damage your mental health. It's Don't fine. worry. It's fine. You're valid. <laughs> but that's the you know. But that's the whole thing is. I don't. I don't. You know. I get it. I understand from a business aspect, it's shitty, because if you are someone that relies solely on your Instagram post, if you're an influencer that's solely or an aspiring influencer that wants to be a person with large numbers, then that's that number's important. I mean, but here's the thing: is you're always going to have those numbers. You know, it's always going to say right. these many people follow you. Um, but at the same time, I think it's it's I think it's kind of a good thing because of what you just said, mental health. Right. Well, you know? I think it, it's an easy way for Instagram to curb the bad press from the social dilemma from all those things where it's like, sure, hey, we're actually advocating for you to have a better mental health. Wink, wink. Well, I, yeah. And I, and I agree because I think there's a lot of, it keeps inf- growing. There's a lot of influencers. There's a lot of people who this is their, you know, this is, um, you know, the, the dopamine mm-hmm. that is needed to make them feel good. And I, you know, people are just so obsessed with their following and their social numbers and what, what likes get on what posts that it consumes them and it, it makes them depressed. You know, it's like, Oh, you know, my social media, it's who gives a shit. You're still a great person. You're still fantastic. Yeah. You know? And, and I, and I think this is the problem with social media. It's a, it's a blessing and a curse because there's many blessings. There's many blessings that come with social media and there's many curses that come with social media. Right. Because, like, where does it end? Like, even if you do become an influencer and you have 156,000 followers, what have you, 200, I mean, The Rock's got, what, 30 million? Like, yeah. you're still always, you know, there's always going to be somebody bigger. So but that's life in so general. It, so it's, right, it's a, I guess, what is it called, the hedonistic treadmill? Yeah, yeah, right? yeah, yeah, something like so that. So, like, it's just, yeah, we we have what we 
need to be happy within ourselves. It's not external, right? It's right. like, it's stopping that. Yeah. Right? Yeah. yeah. But I, I just, I just find a horse over here. <laughs> <laughs> that was deep. That was deep, bro. Um, hey, it's the Zach Dressler show. I don't know why. <laughs> but this whole world we live in when it comes to, when it comes to social media in general, like it's just, it, it's, it's a lot. It's a lot. It, it, you know, I think people take it, and listen, I'm not going to say too seriously because obviously it's a serious thing. It's a business. It's now become part of business plans. You know, what does your social media department look like? Who's involved? You know, what is your social media strategy? What's the plan? What's the content that comes out? It's really, really, really important. Um, but, you know, I, I, I think this experiment, I know IG has done a couple of these experiments in other countries. You know, because people are saying they're going to kill themselves if they don't get enough followers or don't get the likes that they get on a post or, or whatever. And that's just that's just <sighs> insane to me. It's, it's a, it's a real problem. It's a real problem. And I think, you know, uh, Twitter was one, but then you kind of exacerbate it with Facebook and Instagram with photo and video. And then you exacerbate it more with even quicker video with TikTok. TikTok. Yeah. And it, li it literally is, uh, uh, because it consumes, like you look at your screen time and you've got 11 hours on oh, an app Yep. when that could have been, that that's consumption rather than going. Like I'm going to use my time, and there's always going to be some new app that comes out that's going to be right. better than the next app, and it's going to phase right. out, you know. But you know, I, which it just brings me to my next point, which is you know, uh, and I'm glad I, I'm I'm torn about this next this next point I'm about to make. But last week or the week before, um, SAG-AFTRA, the you know the actors union, has decided to allow influencers into the union. Which oh wow yeah I did not hear this yeah this is uh it's it's relatively so they're now they can now apply apply to become part of the union you know and it's a slippery slope because I why I do think that these type of um, influencers and influencers in general should have rep union representation and I think it's you know it 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 will only benefit them I just worry now that we are. How do I put this? Uh, watering down the talent pool that is actually in SAG AFTRA, you know, because now all these people be like, well, I'm in SAG AFTRA. I should be acting in movies. And here's the difference. Sure, you may be able to act for 15 seconds to a minute, but to do a full length feature film is completely fucking different. Right. Well, yeah. Well, do you know what I'm does I hear what I'm that side, like? but I think on the other side too, it's, it's almost like an FU to the influencers. Because it's something, not letting them in. No, or? by letting them in. Well, I guess by letting them in now, because it's like why isn't F because it's something that? that they're like, ah, screw you, you're not, you're not entertainment. But now it's like, oh, they're getting all the advertising, all the advertising, leaving cable, going into these influencers, going into streaming, going into all these things. Sure. So they're going, okay, we have to gobble up some of that market. Of course, right? Like I think it's it's more of I think it's both. No, you know? it's 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 both yeah. everyone scratching each other's itch. Right. A hundred percent. It's 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 you know, one hand washing the other, scratching right. each other's back. It's like now now we're suddenly sure. worthy of SAG because we collectively bring in billions of dollars of advertising, like, you know, in your Instagram posts and your YouTube videos and your podcasts and all that stuff. Like that's valuable money and it's all independent right now. Absolutely. Yeah. It's but you know, but we know from working from from BuzzFeed that sometimes in being independent is good and being in union is better. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because you're safer in a union sometimes than you are now. And, and then again, there's also this whole thing of like, it, you know, I want to talk to my girlfriend, like she gets, you know, job opportunities that are not SAG after that should pay better. You know what I mean? And she wouldn't be able to apply for those if she was part of SAG, you know, there's always right. these, there's always this, you know, back and forth, but you know, I just think it's, you know, how is that going to affect someone? You know, how is that going to affect someone in terms of the, the the followers not having followers with getting into a union? Like, I just feel like this is progressing into an interesting time. You know, with you know quelling followers or hiding uh, hi hiding likes, and also now getting uh, you know influencers going to yeah uh, becoming part of SAG after again, which is great. I just think it, it opens more doors for people to get into this industry, which I think is important. But again, it also saturates it so much that it's, 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 um, the, the talent pool is being watered down. I totally understand that for sure. You know, yeah. and I think there's a lot of people that are not that talented that have a shit ton of followers, you know, I mean, have you seen the thousand pound sisters? 
<laughs> I've seen a lot of people. <laughs> They're not that 327,000 as last time I checked on YouTube. It's crazy. Damn. It's crazy. But again, going back to, as we wrap this up, going back to yeah. this whole thing of like the blessing of the curse social media. I've seen people, I mean, there was a person, I will not, she will remain nameless that we, I worked with at BuzzFeed. And I remember we were shooting a video in the middle of this video shoot. She was watching another video that she was in on, on her phone on YouTube from BuzzFeed. And the comments in the video were just crushing her. Now I try to not look at comments when I'm in big videos like that, but it, who are you kidding? You're going to. You're in the video. You yeah. need to, you need, but you just need to have thick skin. And this person was so upset because the way the video was cut, it portrayed her as uh, just, I don't know if it was stupid or mean or whatnot, but it just didn't favor her. And it, she lost her mind and we couldn't continue shooting the current video we were shooting. Wow. Because she was so consumed, consumed by these comments. And it's like, stop. Like if you and that's and that's the thing I think we're people, in control of that. You're in control of that, and right. I think that's the whole grand, the whole whole thing, uh, uh, putting this big bow on it between either either whether you're an actress in SAG or you're an influencer that has a great following and the comments is that people are going to hate on you no matter what because they are jealous yep. and envious of you. Yep, Cheeto fingered behind the computer. You know, you're in a video. Absolutely, absolutely, yeah, and, and they're always in the, you know, whether it's health and fitness, whether it's sports, whether it's makeup and beauty, people are always going to shit on you because they're not the ones in front of the camera. They're not the ones people are talking about. So they're going to want to talk about you in comments and oh, you don't have enough likes or oh, you're only streaming with ten people or you only have fifteen views on your video. People are there to bring you down no matter what. So. Don't let a silly number that's on an app, okay, bring you down. If they hide it or not, be you and just be great. Anyway, enough of that. Enough of that whole Mr. Goss. Um, we're going to get Tristan on right now. We're going to have a really fun conversation with him. So uh, let's dial him up. Yo, what up? What up, man? What's going on? It's been gotta, a minute. A whole, what, what is this? What is this, this show? It's you got just, a sign? It's, got a graphic in the back? Yeah, a graphic right back there. Okay. We're just chilling, man. We're just chilling. Just, you know, making some content. Just doing a weekly talk show. Having okay. Having guests on. A variety of topics. So, wanted to get you on, man, because, you know, I enjoy talking to you. How you been? Yeah. Man, moving around. I can't can't complain. I've been, been good. Where, where are you right now? Happen. Uh, still at Studio Seventy One um, with Worldstar. Okay. Uh, now I got Worldstar. I got BLM. As of late last month, I got uh, uh, what is it? Amazon Music too. But I say Apple Music. I got uh, Amazon Music also. You're working with all of them. All of them. Three three separate uh, groups. All original content. That's great, man. So wait, are you, yeah. and and Worldstar's cool with you? You know, dipping into other companies. So, so what happened? So, Worldstar is a Studio Seventy One client. Um, okay. And so, our original content with Worldstar has stopped. So now, Worldstar is just Snapchat daily news updates. Gotcha. Um, so, so this is all through Studio Seventy One that you're doing. All through Studio Seventy One. Sick, dude. So, yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. That's fucking awesome. Let's just let's just do it this way. Is that cool? Are we recording? All right. Well, just this is part of the interview. Is that all right? Yeah, all, yeah. Is yeah, that cool? Fine. We talk about yeah. that. That dude, yeah, that's yeah. so that's great, man. So BLM and Amazon Studios, right? Or Amazon yeah. Music. Yeah, yeah. Um, wow. So BLM started uh, like June. Um, they got a, they worked on a deal uh, to do original content for BLM and for Patrice Cullors, one of the founders. Um, so as of right now, we're like twelve, I think like ten episodes in on nice. her channel for original content. Working on the BLM stuff. Uh, just started drawing up plans for uh, Amazon Music, but it should, be, it should be fun. It should be fun getting to, getting into that, getting to come up with ideas. You know, Dude. trying to think of things that cross all the platforms with Amazon. Yeah, and see what can come up. Dude, congrats, man! That's sick, dude. That's really fun. Yeah, cool. thank you. That's thank really you. cool. Yeah, man, you're you're killing it. I mean, you got so much going on. Um, we'll get into all that, but I want to talk. You know. I feel like me and you became really good friends when we were doing our our uh, our, our transformation yeah. our journey our, yeah. our journey transformation video. How are you doing with that? Are you still? Are you I, was, st- I was just about to say, have you kept up? Uh, uh, no. I, I have not. Uh, I have not. 
I mean, a little bit here and there. I, I've definitely listen. It's I've definitely gained weight from being in COVID. Uh, yeah. There's definitely no. There's no. There's no way I was not going to do that. Uh, I'm not doing as much cardio. I do. I, you know, I have resistance bands. I do push ups. Um, you know, I'm working. Steve has that. Uh, I've helped Steve with the online program. Atumobile.com. Oh, how's that? It's good, man. I've shot over like 400, 500 videos with him, and he's created this yeah. whole workout program. I'm sure he'd give it to you for like nothing. You know yeah. what I mean? He, yeah, he'd I'm give it to you for free. But it's all, I need that. it's all, it's all like, it's all the program stuff that we did, all the stuff okay. that we did. And he breaks it down where you can, you can use it at the gym if you want, or you can use mm-hmm. it at home. So like you can okay. switch it oh, up. I'm in some of those. Yeah. Yeah. Ex- yeah. You're yeah, in a, yeah, yeah, yeah. You're in a bunch yeah. of those. You're in a bunch of yeah. those. So, I mean, we were, we were started recording that two years ago. And uh, mm-hmm. it just went live last summer when everything was going down because he needed, you know, the gym wasn't open. Right. So, right. yeah, man, I've been trying to keep up with my re- regiment. You know, I, uh, you know, some of the clothes I, I bought after, <laughs> after we lost mm-hmm. all that weight ain't fitting properly, <laughs> but it'd be all right, man. It's all right. But you. Yeah. You- um, I was, you know, like we, we did it. And then I had like that run, you know, once it stopped, I started to like, you know, you go here and there. And yeah. then I had that run of like back to back to back car accidents. I had like four car accidents in like a calendar year or so. Oh shit. Um, yeah, like the first the first one like um I got rear ended um uh, on the 10 by like a uh like a huge ass like truck and I was just like done. I was done like lifting anything for a couple months. Then I got rear ended again. Then I got uh, I got T-boned in a hit and run and then I got another rear end. And I was just like, for a minute, I wasn't even wanting to drive. Like, um, my car got totaled uh, off of the first hit, so I had to get a new car. Um, and I just was like, not lifting anything heavy because you know my my back was fucked up yeah. for a minute. Um, so <laughs> didn't do anything Fuck. with that. Um, started getting back into running a bit, um, and I was doing pretty good. I was doing like, this was I want to say. Yeah, I want to say before, uh, right when everything took off, I was doing like four or five miles a day, sometimes wow. like eight. So what, like last June? Um, yeah. No, yeah, this was like March, like Marches, like once we like first got home. Okay. Um, I was getting, getting the cardio in, and it felt felt great, man. I was trying to, you know, eat better and all that stuff. Uh, drinking less. Uh, I was still like smoking, of course, but like, you know. Yeah. I was, I was running, trying to maintain something, and that, that was cool, and then just like, fucking covid slump hit and i just couldn't do anything at all yeah man it fu- it fucks with my effect with my my mental health which it, it in turn fuck my physical health like it just wasn't exactly i didn't you know i tried to get back into it you know like after like the first two months of lockdown i was like all right listen i can do this i know how to eat healthy i can run it's not a big yeah. deal and i was doing great i was like three weeks straight going on runs get, you know start off at two miles work my way up to three four and then man i i don't know what it was i just i was running one day I stepped. I went down from a cur- from the from the street from the curb to the street, and like a sniper, my calf just like shot itself. Really? Yeah, and I and I, I got a calf strain for like three weeks to put me out. Um, and then I felt good. Like summer, I started doing keto diet, which was interesting, mm-hmm. and I enjoyed that. Uh, I lost like twenty pounds on that. You know, was lifting and doing resistance bands and push ups and stuff around the house and and running. Uh, and then the holidays hit. You know, the holidays, man. It's yep. just too much good food. So yeah. But where are you yeah, at right now? Are you are you yeah. in LA? I'm in LA. I'm in LA. Okay. Uh, I was I went home in the summer from like June to September to help out with family stuff. Went back in December. Just got back a couple weeks ago. Yeah. Um. I'm fam. I'm familyed out. I've seen my parents more in the in this last year <laughs> than I have since I moved since the last time I lived with them. Well, I'm so, jealous, man. I'm jealous. Yeah, I haven't seen my folks in like the, a year. Yeah. You told me you were going home, and your dad was like, "Nah." Nah, my dad, my dad had major back surgery last year, and he was just like, "Listen, I'm staying." He's like, "I'm gonna be a hermit. Ain't nobody coming here." He's like, "You can yeah. come visit my, you can come visit your your brother if you want," but even my brother was like, "No one's, no one's coming here. No one's." No. So no. I'm going back this summer. I'm excited. I'm gonna go see, you know, go to New York, check out everybody. It's been a minute, but uh, yeah, man, it's uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's been it's, it's been a rough time year. To get back out. It's, yeah. it's not been fun. It's not been fun. And we're what? A, I'm a week away from. I, mean, I, I started quarantine from work on the 13th so yep that's when we started I'm a, I'm a week away from a year of being in the house and i thought that like working from home would be cool but i think like 
working from home would be cool if I had the option to go do so much other shit yeah. during my work day. But yeah. you know, like I am, I'm bedroom to this desk. This is my, this isn't even a desk. This is my kitchen table that I'm at where I've turned into an office and then back to my bedroom. And it's just, it's not enough. It's not enough commute. I didn't think know how much I'm, I needed to commute. <laughs> And I think I, I think I think it's also for guys like us. I think we miss being in studio. I think we miss being in, yes. you know, around the around production, around cameras, around all that stuff. You know what I mean? Yeah. And, and I, it, you know, I I agree with you. It was it was I think it was cool in the beginning to be working from home because I was like, oh, this is great. You know, I can wake mm-hmm. up. You know, no one cares. But then it's you know we can't go anywhere. There wasn't anything we can do. There wasn't, Nowhere. You know, and it, it's just it's it's it, it fucked with my mental psyche for sure. Yeah. So, and I ate way better. I ate way better like being at work. Yeah, you know. I, I I think it's I think it's just it, it, it's the convenience of it all because you know you think you're gonna cook healthy at home, and then you're like nah I'm just gonna order shit and eat shit. Yeah, because it's like it's, you don't have that like okay, I'm driving home let me stop at the store like I'll sit here and then it'll be like oh I'm like oh fuck it's nine thirty yep. I haven't eaten at all did I, did I eat today at all? And you're not gonna go and you're not gonna go to the grocery store at that point and pick anything up to eat. Nah, nah, exactly. Nah, I'm exactly. going whatever's over. It. Yeah. So uh, switching a little track here, I want to talk about uh, sneakerhead, sneaker culture. You're a huge sneaker guy. Oh man, let's let's get it. Oh, this so, is a, a great this is a great week to talk about it. Yeah, this it is. is. A great week to talk about it, it is. It is. So it, it, this week, especially, uh, what was it? The NBA? It was an NBA Top Shop. It's called uh, NBA Top Shop uh, with like the cards and everything has been the NFTs are non fungible tokens. Yeah, yeah. Has yeah. been. I'm still learning what it is. I don't get the point of the NBA Top Shot because it's a clip that's on YouTube as well. Yeah, like I don't get why I need to own that, but it's art. It's not everything for for everybody. But you um, can buy sneakers with it, right? That's uh, you can do a lot of things uh, with it. I mean, I guess you can you can buy it. People are reselling them, so you can buy anything with it. It's it's a currency now. Yeah. Um, it's like a playing card, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um. So so you can and people are selling art and stuff with it, like they're making things. I think somewhere somebody's doing something illegal, and they're like. Somewhere, some of this has to be covering for like drug money <laughs> or, or something. Because I don't see buying a gift. I don't see what I need a gift for. No, exactly. Exactly. Yeah. You don't. I don't. I don't get that at all. But it, is, um, and it was a big week for 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 the sneakers, right? What's what? Yeah, what dropped you, this week? Uh, no, not what. Well, what dropped this week was an article uh about this kid, um, West Coast oh, Joe. Oh yes. The Nike, um, the Nike dude. Yeah, so that's what dropped this week that has been, um, been crazy. We actually just wrapped. Uh, you know, I have the, you know, I have the shoe store back in St. Louis. Yeah, I want, that's why I want to get into that as well that. with Thirty Nine Castles. Um, yeah, so they talked about that uh, on the show today, but the community's been in like an uproar about this thing. Um, so, like, you know, me, I have the shop that resells. So, as from that aspect, I get people being greedy. I get you manipulating the market, whatever. As a person who grew up like, yo, I just need the shoe. I just want the shoe. You know, my passion is still in just having the shoe. Um, this this guy is an asshole. Yep. His mom's an asshole. His dad's an ass. Um, I saw, like, tweets trying to, like, absolve her of any, any of this. And I'm just like, no, there's, there's no way that you, as a parent at all, are unaware that your son has a warehouse and are unaware that he's running up transactions on your, on your credit card. You, yeah, it's, exactly. it's not gonna happen. Exactly. Yeah. It's it's too it's too much coincidence. It's, it's too much bullshit, really. And it's it's yeah, you know, and and it because she just you know, she didn't want to lose her job, and she did, and good because that's it's insider. Tra- it's basically insider trading. It, it's it's a it's Rico. Yeah, yeah. So so then so like what came out was in 2018 she alerted Nike of what was going on, as well as the the father allegedly has the L- created the LLC. So Jeez. like whole families whole families in on this thing. Um. What really fucks me up is if you're aware of the Nike sneakers app, uh, it is damn near impossible to get a shoe on sneakers. Yep. Um, no matter what time you get on there, you get you're getting beat by a bot. If you if you win, congratulations. No no one else is no one else is winning. And then you find out his uh his mom is over sneakers, like his mom's over the app. Yep. So like not only is your son having buying shoes in the hundreds, you know, he but he's getting that, he's getting pre sales. He's getting he's getting the pre-sale and you're over the you're over the app that's keeping me from getting from getting the shoe that shoe that yep. I want. You know, um I'm behind I'm I'm behind in line of one person that's getting a thousand pairs at this point. Like this is this is ridiculous. Um so like now it's this whole thing of 
uh, if you look at the certain markets, like Foot Locker owns Goat, Goat and yeah. Goat and uh, StockX are the two main like big reselling apps right now. So you already see like Foot Locker's in on the resale game; they're getting money thrown back up. So now I'm like, if Nike's known about this since 2018, they're probably also in on the resale market, and it's oh, just you know, it's probably like some shadow investment kind of thing where it's nowhere on the books, but I gotta believe that they're getting a kickback from this as well. Wow, I mean, it's it, it's it's it it really it blew my mind when I read the article. I was like, how did people? It, like you said, she learned in Nike in 2018. It's now 2021, so yeah. you, you let this shit go on for three years, pretty much. Yeah, you know, and how long was it going on before that? If she just and learned it would have gone on. Yeah, and exactly. It, if if he if he was cool with just, it's so funny how people tell on themselves all the time. Like, hey, I'm doing this really cool thing, and it's all so fucked up. But let me tell you. Um, and like the way that they found out was he kept badgering to get this article and he's on his, and the, he's calling the reporter and his mom's name pops up as the caller ID. And then the reporter Googles his mom, who is oh like a, VP, a VP at Nike. So it's always the dumb way they get caught, man. It's always, it's the, always dumb way. the dumb way. It's always a dumb way. But what did you, so when did you start becoming like a sneakerhead? Like how, like what, what, and what goes into being a sneakerhead? Like do you yeah. have a whole separate closet full of shoes? Oh man, I have, um, funny enough, I have like the, the apartment we're in now has two, my bedroom has two closets. So yeah, there's one that is just shoes. Um, so it's probably, I think I have like 50 or so pairs here right now, probably. And do you wear, um, do you go around wearing them all or you just hold on to yeah, them for a time? I, I wear my, I wear my shoes. I wear my shoes. Um. There's a few that, you know, I'll buy if I don't have an interest from I'll buy and I'm, I'll send back to the store in St. Louis. Yeah. Um, but also I have a bunch of friends that like, hey, I want this shoe and if I'm not interested in it. I'll be able to let me go on the app and I'll try to hit for you. And, you know, like when it's when it's those situations, if it's a friend that I know, like he wants it and he's going to he's going to wear it. Then we usually just like, hey, you know, you know what the retail what it, for it was retail plus shipping, you know, just pay for me, pay me back to ship it to you. Yeah. But like, I, I'll get it for you. I know you're going to put in your foot. If you're going to sell it, then I'm not going to get it for you. But um, I got into shoes like crazy early. My mom um, is big in a fashion. So I like I grew up like back when Jordans were releasing on like Wednesdays and stuff. I grew up like coming home. The box is there. My mom's like, I got I got you a shoe, you know, um. You got to have the good grades, but you had them. I mean, I had, like, all I had all the Jordans growing up. I had the Team Jordans when they were still cool. I had the the Iversons and all. I, I remember. Uh, I had a pair of the Iversons. I want to say the 2003, two, uh, whichever, I think whichever All-Star game was the last one that Jordan was in. I had the uh, the Iversons that were released, and they were, like, this white and red pair. And I got them. My mom somehow knew someone at the store. Like, I got them early. And I wore them to school like that Friday, you know, the game is on Sunday. And I'm like, I was, I was the man, you know? So yeah. like, it's, all, it's always, for me, it's always been like, I, you're, you're putting them on to like, when you step out, people are like, oh, you got those, you know, it's, it's a respect. And it's a, it's a really cool community. Um, the first pair I got for myself was the Flint Gray 13s. I now have the 2015 pair and the 2020 pair in my closet right now. Wow. Uh, but I got these, I think 2004, 2005. Uh, I had just turned like 15. They were coming out. Uh, I applied for a job at finish line, got the shoe uh, off my discounted finish line, and then I like stupidly quit right after I got the <laughs> shoe. <laughs> Was like, I had a discount, I should have stayed. Uh, but man, my like my friends, everyone forever. Soup. I mean, I've met a ton of people through sneakers. Um, my room, my first roommate out here in LA, actually, I met him through this website called Nike Talk, um, which is like this huge internet forum, and. I've met, I mean, I've met a ton of like lifelong friends off of there. And that was just like, you'd be on there talking about releases, but there was a forum about like just general bullshit. There was a forum about like music and all this stuff. And it was like this really dope community. Most of the people that you see me talk to on Twitter are from Nike Talk right. um, okay. that have just like graduated from the app now. But a bunch of us started playing Call of Duty, which we'll get into a little later. Yeah, later. absolutely. A um, bunch of us started playing Call of Duty together off of like Nike Talk. And then we're like lifelong friends. Um, craziest shoe story I could probably give you outside of like growing up in St. Louis where like people get robbed all the time. So like I had friends that were like, we're going to get a shoe. We're going to get a release. And like, they have a pistol on them because we got to get the, you got to get the shoe, yeah. get out the, get out the, you got to get out the mall, get to the car and get home. You know? Like I've had, I've had those situations, but um, 
Jordan did uh, these packs, uh, these defining moments packs, DMPs, and it was um, combinations of shoes that added up to 23. Um, so we had the 11-12 pack uh, was coming out, and it was the white and black, the Taxi 12s. Okay. And then the black and red, the bread, the bread 11s, which if you if you know Jordan 11s, you know exactly what that shoe is, yep. and you know how much that shoe matters. Um, me, me, uh, three of my friends, uh, one of them like super bad. We knew uh, the St. Louis Galleria uh, has a store called Champs, and it was the only store that was getting them at the time. And they opened at I think six a.m. that day to let them to. They opened at six a.m. that Saturday to release the shoe. Uh, Friday night, me, three of my friends get in the car, go to the mall, we buy tickets for the very last movie in the theater. So you know, like the latest movie lets out at like. 1 30 2 a.m right right <laughs> so movie ends we're moving in we've all got our phone charges and all this shit we all go to the bathroom everyone just gets in like a stall <laughs> take like a takes like a nap and just <laughs> chill in the bathroom right i think like 4 30 happens um now people are coming in to clean the mall janitorial staff there and shit uh so we get woke up. They're like, we got to clean. Can you leave? No one's supposed to be here. So we're in here. So now we just go sit in front of champs. Security comes up. The mall's not open yet. You can't be there. You got to get out. So we walk out the, the exit, um, run around to the other side, right? Walk back in the mall. Security's like, hey, another security guard is like, hey, you can't be in here. <laughs> we like split up. I run downstairs. There's a janitor. I grab a broom, start sweeping uh, with one of the janitors. <laughs> <laughs> so like this is like the cat and mouse, mouse game for like an hour and a half the mall like i said the mall opens up at six like 5 30 we run back up sit down in front of champs one two three four in line wow we, we all all get them uh amazing time i would never do it again the one time in your life that's the best time of your life man that's that's incredible yeah so wow <laughs> so that's 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 the pretty much what you would do for shoes man you would just do yeah. that that's crazy and like that, and like what was really cool about like back then was before like all oh, this huge like bubble with social media and like this resale, the resale era that we're in now. And apps and Goat app and all the that. The apps stuff. and everything, you know, you had to actually go to the store and going to the store because sometimes you had midnight releases, whatever, you know, you still had those people that camped out and like camping out and stuff. You, you got you got a pair of shoes that you were to camp out because everybody's got to know that you that you got heat, you know. So like I got a fly pair on to go camp. To right. go buy another pair, but we're also like we're trading stories. So I'm telling you, you know, we're sitting there. I'm telling you that story about how crazy that was. What I did, you're telling me this story. We're talking about what, what we got in our closets. I might have something that I'm not even wearing anymore. That you're like, man, this is my this is my grail. And like your grails are like shoes that you wish you could have. You know, you, yeah. you missed out on. One day you're gonna go back and get them, whatever it takes. And like, oh, you got oh, I got those in the crib right now. You know, come through. Like I'll sell them to you for for whatever. But that's where like a lot of the community came from was having those moments talking to each other and now you see it less and less because we're in this age of everybody just wants to sell most of these people aren't even like buying to wear them they don't know like the history behind the shoe they don't know you know they can't tell you when jordan wore them they can't right. tell you what the first pair dropped was they can't they can't tell you those moments of like they don't have those memories because they're just in it for the money they're not in it for it the value of like the emotional feel that you get when you get these things, you know, and when you do break them out and somebody's like, Oh shit, you got those. That's crazy. Yeah. And that's, and that's what I love about like the, the culture that the sneakerhead culture in general, it's like these stories, you know, it's like the passion behind it. It's not the whole right. resale. It's not the whole fandom of it all, which I think it's like you said, it's become because of things like the goat app and all that stuff. Yeah. And that's, a, and that's a really good thing that we, that we managed to like, when we when we were coming up with like 39 castles that was something that as a team like we really harped on was like we love shoes yeah so like if, if you come into 39 castles you're not just coming in to sell a shoe you're coming in to also chop it up about the shoe that you got on and like what it meant for you to have it or like what's your what's your all-time favorite shoe what makes that your favorite shoe like yeah. there's a memory that you go back to about that shoe when you had it i'm like let's talk about that tell me that story i want that that lets me know who you are yeah. you know so like come here and be a, come here and be a community don't just come here and be a buyer or a seller i like that i like that a lot have you ever been sold a shoe or bought a shoe that was fake and you didn't realize it until after you got it 
I I got a shoe from a friend uh, for a cel- uh I had just crossed. I had just probated for my fraternity, which is where you like come out to the world that you're you're a new member. She got me a pair of uh, Jordan Spizikes, and the moment I opened them, I was like, Nah, really? <laughs> these I was like, Nah, these ain't it. Um, and never put a, I never put them on because I had to think of like. <laughs> I had this thing kind of kind of like a like an athlete using like PEDs. I was like, the moment that it touches my body, there's no, there's no going, there's no going back. You know. Yeah, because then you settle you for use, everything else. Yeah. Like yeah. you don't use steroids once. You, you, you use steroids, you see what your results were in that game. I'm using steroids again next week. So I was like, I can't even put them on because it's gonna compromise my feet. <laughs> so That's so funny. So I've never, I've never had a pair of fakes. Never, never sold a pair. Never grabbed a pair. I've had people try to like flip me a shoe, and I've looked at them, and I've been like, "That ain't it. I know, I know it's not it. You don't give me off the vibe that it's real, and yeah. I, I can't go with it." Yeah. Um. So now I've, we're in, we're also in a weird place now where there's there's things where you can go on the internet on um, certain Reddit forums, and you can find a fake that looks exactly like the real shoe. Right. Um, and a lot of, a lot of stores are getting caught up with this as well. StockX had a huge problem with this when the Travis Scott ones dropped last year. So many fakes are they're such a high quality right now yeah. that you you really cannot tell. So that's why I'm I'm always kind of apprehensive about me buying uh secondhand shoes because I'm like I don't know that that I don't know that you the person I'm getting it from has really vetted has, that shoe's really been vetted and I know that I'm getting something that you bought at the store. So like sometimes I'll ask for the receipt. Like let me let me see the receipt. Let me see the transaction that you did on your card. Yeah. So I can really know that you got them. I can have some kind of mindset that you got them. You know. So what? So when your process at Thirty Nine Castles is it? You guys do don't do much like secondhand resale. It's all brand new bought that you. We resell. do we do a ton of brand new bought. Okay. A ton of brand new bought. We had we had a couple of like uh, very trusted people that we know that have that uh, help out with like the bot systems to get us some stuff, but. Um, all of our all of our merchandise is for the majority. Uh, we buy either through through the company or it's like secondhand that I bought and now I'm selling through. I'm, gotcha. I bought and I'm giving to the store. Um, and then we ha- you know we have friends that that we that we've known for years that we know they're not bringing fakes in. Gotcha. Like because they can't comp. You know, the same same way as if you bring me a fake, like you you're done you're done. You can't have given me a fake once. And and if you give me a fake once, every shoe that you've ever given me, every shoe that I see you in, you're a question. Off, is is a fake, you know. Yeah. So you gotta, your, you know, your word is only as good as the shoe that you bring in as well. So the people that, even the people that we allow to sell through the store on consignment, they're they're vetted as well. Gotcha. Yeah, because I remember when I did when I was at Buzzfeed, I did a video with Goat, and the guy that you know we brought an authenticator, and you know he was just sitting yeah. there and just going through. He's like, even sometimes this little stitching here and this, you know, he's like, he's smells. Like, it's yeah, so, it's so much stuff. He's like, but there's so much things that like these fake fake artists, these fake shoemakers are getting so good at making them now. It's becoming harder and, and harder to differentiate. I mean, as well as you have you have Nike that sells B grade shoes, and a, and a B grade is a shoe that didn't hit all the marks, but you know they'll they'll put it out. You oh, know, so I didn't know and about and, that. and a B grade can look like a fake. A yeah. fake can look like a B grade. You know, if, if they're making a fake that looks as good <laughs> as the authentic one, I'm I'm picking up at the store. Then why wouldn't a B grade? Why wouldn't they be able to make a B grade? You know, interesting. I did not know that. All right, before we go to gaming, what are your top five shoes that you like? Like right, either that you you're all time in love with, or like currently that you love. You like your top five, uh, just so I can five, I can I can mark uh, them off and try to buy them for my wardrobe. Let me let me think. Top five. Uh, Jordan 13, Jordan 13 Flint Grays, yeah. probably my number one. Um, bread one, bread Jordan one, you know, that's that's the classic. That's you, you got it. If you're a sneakerhead, you got to If you don't have that as a pair, yeah, even if it's just like my pair is destroyed, but I got them, yeah, you know, if I need to throw them on, I got them. Um, the Hunter SB is one that's my grill. When, I'm gonna get it one day. Uh, the Yeezys, um, Red Octobers. I mean that that was one that okay. Nike dropped it. Uh, Nike dropped it just randomly on the sneakers app. No, no, like alert, nothing. Popped up. Some people got them. I did not get them. Price for those are crazy right now. Um, and then I'm from St. Louis, so I I gotta go with just like the classic all white low top Air Force One, mid Air Force One. I mean that that's a, that's a staple. We we you know when Nelly Nelly dropped the, the song Air Force One. Yeah. Um. That shoe sold out more than Jordans. Jordans were sitting on the shelves. I had, uh, I had, had I had a, a couple pair of Nike yeah. Air Force ones. 
Yeah, so actually, I think I'm, I'm gonna switch it and say that Air Force One is probably my number one shoe because okay. that that that's home. That's you know that's sneaker culture in its finest, but that's also like that's home. You know, if I say, you know, if I'm from St. Louis, if you're from St. Louis and you didn't have an Air Force One, you're not from St. Louis, so that's home for me. Yeah, I remember my first. I had a pair of Air Force Ones when Nelly, you know, dropped. You know, talking about Air Force Ones all the time in the song. But I remember my first pair of Jordans I got. I don't remember what the what brand it was. It was oh, it was the Space Jam's one. But the one before yeah. the Space Jam is also the one I yeah. had because I was playing basketball and those things to me were sacred. Like I yeah. did, they only touched the court. You know, if we were going traveling, I just had a regular pair of shoes on. I did, those things never saw the light of day. And then after the season, I, I'd wear them, you know, willy nilly because I knew the next year there's something new. Yeah, we used to do we used to do dumb shit like you you buy it and you like flick the sole, um, super dumb shit. Uh, I remember when I got those those slim grade thirteens that I, I worked a job for. I wore my like house shoes into yeah. school, and then once I got to my locker, I took them on my backpack and I put them on. And once we got ready to leave school, I took them back off and put my house shoes back on to, so that I only touched the, the floor in the school. I did not touch outside for like the first the first like couple months I had. Yeah, I did it with all my like all my shoes, either whether they're cleats or, or sneakers, whatever it would be. I just never they only touched yeah. whatever surface they were supposed to touch while I was exactly. playing the game, whatever game it was. Well, let's uh, switch over to a topic I'm excited to talk to you about. Uh, well, everything I'm t- excited to talk to you about, but gaming. So right, let's, let's, let's talk it. about gaming. So I don't, I don't know if I'd say I'm a gamer or so to speak. I, I, all I really play is Call of Duty and a couple other games. So Call of Duty has mm-hmm. been like my go-to. I used to love Halo, all that stuff, but Call of Duty for the past my baby. decade yeah. has been my my jam. I feel like I've, it's all I play. And mm-hmm. the new and the War Zone has really stepped up. You know, it, it the game itself because MP was fun, but after a while you're like, all right, this is right. And I feel like the two games are different. But I feel yeah, like the, the reward is more for for the when, if you win a war zone, you feel you feel so much more validated. Yeah, absolutely. And I didn't get into the war zone really until because I didn't do it in uh, I did it in Modern Warfare. But the game that was the, the Call of Duty game that came out the year before uh, Modern Warfare, they had the war zone game, and I just I couldn't get I didn't understand. It. I think mm-hmm. it's because I didn't have any friends to play with, and now it's all I do. I I I, I would say I am become addicted to this. <laughs> to play yeah, this game yeah. I, how, yeah. how, I'm, I'm gonna get on right after this i, I do i play probably like two three hours a day yeah i mean wh- how much are you playing probably like probably like five really like five or six in at this point um because i'm playing like part through through the work that i got like two hours to burn through the yeah, work yeah. day and like one of my discord groups like hey hop on um and then i have also like i'm playing it's, I have a lot of friends on the West Coast, so on the East Coast. So I'm playing with like my East Coast guys earlier. Then Matt and Garrick, who used to work with at Buzzfeed, yeah, yeah, like yeah. they're getting on later. Matt Garrick and Ify are getting on at like nine and ten on the West Coast. So I'm doing like a, a East Coast shift, a West Coast shift. Yeah, yeah. Um, but I'm I'm loving it. Um, I started the first um first uh one I played was PUBG. Um, Fortnite I just could never get into. Yeah, I couldn't um, get so into like Fortnite. Then, PUBG was the battle royale that really stuck with me. And then Warzone just Warzone just felt so right. Like it was a lot of things that I wanted from wanted from PUBG that they didn't have. Like, you know, the gulag where you get that second chance to come back. Yep. Or you you can and the ability to buy, you know, teammates back, the ability to like get the loadouts, get kill streaks, get all this stuff, you know, UAVs. Like all all they they did a good job of taking things that you really liked from multiplayer and throwing them in this battle royale. Yep. And made it more strate- strategic than multiplayer. Because yeah. multiplayer, you're just going to go around shooting until you die. Exactly. You can't do exactly. that here. Yeah, the only thing that, like, has really been a struggle for me has been... So I'm, on, I'm on Xbox, you know, I'm, I'm diehard, diehard Xbox Same. ever since Halo 1. Yep. Um, I'll tell that story later. Uh, but, like, now that there's this crossplay thing, you know, the, the guys on PC, and I, I and if Matt watches it, he's going to be pissed because I said PC, PC guys killed the game, but... There's so many cheaters from the, that are on a computer, and it's just you can't turn the crossplay off unless you're on PlayStation, and like that's a bummer because there's been so many games where I'm we're the, we're the last team. It's like all four of us are here. There's there's a four v one, and the other guy is nowhere to be found, and he's on the other end of the map doing a stem glitch. Yeah, and you you can't do anything. You know, it's it's, it's a rapid depth. And he's got a and he's got a better frame rate, so he can see better around yeah. trees and rocks and everything. Yeah. You can hide, but it, it's it's I hate it. I, I play with my buddy Chris on a week on a daily basis. Um, he works for Activision, and it's just like 
I oh, feel man, I got I got a, got a bone to pick with him. <laughs> well, he's on <laughs> he's on the producing side. He doesn't do much all of right. the, the, all that stuff. He makes all the trailers and shit. He's not doing any of that stuff. But okay, it, it's it's. We, we get frustrated because, again, it's like it, it, like you said, we get down to, like, the final five or three, and then it's some guy who's wall hacking or some guy that's a hacker, mm-hmm. And, mm-hmm. And, and it's and it's always a PC. It's always yeah. a PC. And I don't know. Like, we always talk, like, what can they do to change it? They need to figure out something to do to change it. Man, they, they, they do, like, these halls where they, they'll, ban, like, the, they'll ban the accounts for, you know, for cheaters. But these guys got another account. Yeah, they're just starting one. Like, they yeah, need to ban the IP ban, address yeah. is what they need to do. Exactly. Exactly. They need to hard hard ban the, the computer or whatever. And I think that's the thing is like you can ban my you can ban my Xbox for cheating. Right. You know, I don't know if you can ban a PC. Um but yeah, they they do and I I've watched videos about like why these guys are cheating and it's like some of them are like it's a $10 a month subscription and like what is what is $10? Like that's a that's less than what you're getting off DoorDash, so of, yep. of course they're going to cheat. You <laughs> know why, why wouldn't they? It just but I just feel like it just it, I, I get why they want to, but it just ruins the game. Now it ruins the game. It ruins the game. Do you have the new Xbox? Are you playing the? Yeah, yeah, I got okay. the new Xbox. I need I, to get um, that. I need to get that one. Struggled to. There's no game. There's no games on this, so do not rush. Um, okay. I struggled to get it, and luckily one of the guys uh, who's in one of the sneaker groups I'm in, he got one, and he was like, "Yo, just." pay shipping you know pay the shipping costs and i got it right before christmas uh and i love it i love it it's uh you didn't you didn't I think like, about switching over to ps5 because i've thought about that i haven't i gotta see the controller my issue with uh playstation was the con- the controller never felt once i played xbox the first time i felt i loved the feel of the I even agree. the big beefy one i was like oh, i like how this feels in my hand yeah and then going back to playstation just it felt so odd um, I also don't have a community on that because, like, the so the guys I've been playing Xbox with, shoot, um, two honestly, like 2000, 2006, like, I like right when I graduated, like, before I graduated high school, and then since then, it's been the same, the same group of guys. Um, yeah. and if when, when we have a, a text group that we talk shit to each other on all day, um, same guys I get shoes with, we talk about music and everything, so. Also, a big part of this, like a big part of like me, like getting on Xbox Live is not just playing the game, but it's me being able to catch up and talk to somebody. Yeah. And you know, like we're guys, we're not really just gonna sit on phone. We're not gonna call each other on like a four way phone no. call and just talk. But you know, the the game gives us it gives me some something to do that distracts me from the fact that I'm actually just on, talking to you and asking how your day was. Well, it's like having the know? friends over to watch, uh, you know, the exactly. Falcons or, or or you know, watch exactly. uh, man, you know, Man City. Which yeah. I mean, I wouldn't join maybe, you for. Maybe it, but Man City. I, I wouldn't. Have, I wouldn't have anybody over watch the Falcons. That's, that's a very, <laughs> very private, time very, for me. very sacred thing for you. Very sacred. Yeah, because I'm probably cursed out Matt Ryan like ten times. Wondered why they haven't fired the coach. Oh, we'll talk about I, that. I, in I had a second. friend. I had a friend watch a game with me. He said, "This is not fun." <laughs> that was his response, and I'm like, "Yeah, don't don't watch football with me at all." Yeah, yeah. It's like me watching some people watching the Giants game. With me. It's never fun. Um, but so. You play with Garrick, you play with Matt, all, if you know all of them. What do they play on? Does Matt play on PC? Matt plays on PC if he's on PC. Garrick's on uh, PlayStation. So we're, we're, running the, we're running the whole thing. You're running the whole um, gamut. We're running the whole thing. And they actually, Matt and Ify actually got me streaming now. So I'm on, they, they kind of forced my hand onto Twitch. Which yeah, what, I have to say, like, I, I, I want to get onto Twitch. I have the, the only people I watch are you and Matt. Those are the only two it's channels. <laughs> that's the only two Good. channels I watch. There's only two channels Good. I watch because it's. I know you guys are gonna be. I mean, I know Matt streams a couple other games, uh, but he's primarily you know Call of Duty. So I only watch you guys. Yeah. You know, whatever you guys are streaming, I'll I'll tune in for like a little bit. Yeah, uh, it's, been, it's been fun. It's very. It's 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 funny how much it feels so different. Like if I'm if I want to walk in my room right now and I'm just playing. I do so much better than when I turn the stream on. It's like oh, once I course. know somebody's watching, then always. it's like, oh shit. Always. You know? Always. I feel like I have rituals. Like there's certain spots in the map I got to hit, like Hangar 6, train station, there's certain places yeah. where I'm like, I know I'm, these are going to be safe and I know I'm not going to be safe. You know, yep. me and my buddy, we've, we've been wanting to stream. I just need to get, because you need a separate computer to do the streaming for Xbox, don't yeah, you? Yeah, yeah. So you can stream on Xbox by itself, but you don't get, like, the chat and everything. From right, and you, don't get um, to, and you don't get your face in the in the corner yeah, like the way we have it here. Yeah, you yeah. have to put that separate. So I, yeah, so I have, um, there's this thing called the HD60 or whatever. Um, that's like a capture card. You have to plug that into your laptop. You plug it into both your laptop and then you feed the HDMI into it as well from the computer. 
Um, I mean, from the Xbox. So there's all that's going on. And then you have this, these two apps. Uh, uh, one's called Streamlabs OBS. We have all, all this stuff going on. You got the one on the side for yeah. everything. So like this computer, this my laptop turns into like my streaming side gotcha. while I'm focused here. And then I got a webcam set up over here. Yeah, what, so what's can, the like, webcam you use? What's the webcam? Uh, I couldn't even tell you. I was like, Matt, I need a webcam. And he like blew dust off this thing. I was like, here, just come, <laughs> come pick it up. <laughs> Nice. Nice. All right. Uh, a couple more questions about gaming. What are, so what is your, what is your favorite loadout ever? Or what are you, what are, what are you currently using now? Right now I'm using the M13 uh, Mac 10 loadout. Okay. Uh, the M13 has been my go-to. Uh, Same. Since the game started. Same. It's, uh, it doesn't hit as hard as everything. So, you know, like when the growl was meta, when the kilo was meta, I jumped into those. Stayed with the growl. I didn't like the kilo, but the M13 is like, it's like home. Like I, I know what it's going to do. Yeah. You know, I know what the recoil is like. I feel like I get my I, most I, wins when I'm using my M13. Yeah. Yeah. And the thing is like meta, the meta keep changing, keep changing, keep changing. You know, we had the car for a while. Um, yeah. We had the, the, what was that? The DMR. Yeah. You know, but like, I was good with the DMR. It was terrible with the yeah. car. I remember you sent me the loadout for the car you're using. And I tried it and I'm like, I just got to practice, got to practice. I'm terrible. I'm yeah. better with an HDR. Yeah, so like, I, I like the car because it's, it's quicker. Yeah. Um, but the HDR, if they're further, you, you're going to do way better. Um, range. The M16 was fun for a while. The M16 was fun, and then they nerfed the suppressor, which uh, it's I back up. just made it. I think it's, it's back, back up. up now. Yeah, yeah, I read it's back that. back up now. But it's, it's the thing of, like, like we, we've named just now six guns that were a meta, but the M13 has been, like, unchanged. Yeah. So, like, why, why wouldn't I just stay with the gun that I know exactly what it's going to do, you yeah. know? And I love the MP5. I'm a big MP5 guy. Oh, uh-huh. yeah. I feel like MP5 that's that's, that's ones that's never changed really. And also the M4. I have an M4 MP5 combo that I, I like to use sometimes. I have never been able to get into the M4. The M4 has never done it for me for some reason. It's got a little um, bit more pack, a little more punch than the than the M13. Yeah. But it's 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 yeah. a little bit more. It, it moves more than the M13. So that's the frustrating yeah. part of it. The the Ram is one that I like for close quarters. That's a great one. Um, yeah. The scar, I wish they did the scar justice with the clip. Um, the scar was has been like a great gun for me through like since like Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2. So I was like, why didn't they make this gun good for Warzone as yeah. well? But well the mother know, of pearl, is, the, the the floor load out of the scar, the mother of pearl. Oh, I hate that thing. Really? I, I, I get, when I, I get pick it up with it. I, I I do well in close range with it. I, I, I get clapped with it. Really? Um, what? interesting. Well, oh, how many, how many victories do you have? I'm at I'm at eighty right now. I think I got eighty Fuck. yesterday. Yeah. So what are you winning? Are you winning like one a day? Uh no, not at all. I'm like thirty six. I got like thirty six days of playing this game at this point. Oh. Um, yeah, I'm like eighty in. We, we're averaging like one every other day. Um, Damn. I will. I, what I want to do is get like two a day. Probably what do you usually you usually like do? Trios and quads. Trios and quads. Okay. Yeah. Um, duo duos is usually like. While we're waiting for somebody else to get on, yeah, I, I majority of my majority of my games have come from duos. Um, I don't because it's just again, it's like all my friends on the East Coast they'll yeah. play earlier, and so I'll do a trios and, and quads with them. But here on the West Coast, it's like I only have like a couple of friends that are playing the West Coast. So yeah, but I got a and I got a couple kills. I'll send you some clips. I've been trolling a bit with uh the Waki Wazikaji or whatever it is, the the samurai sword. Oh really? <laughs> Yeah, so I got a couple. I got a loadout, uh, a ghost loadout. That's the M13, and then the Samurai Sword. And I've just been running around with that. That's been pretty fun. That's fucking awesome. I gotta try that. Yeah, I've. I think I have like 27, 28 wins so okay. far. Uh, it took me a while to get my first win, man. It took me a minute to get my first. Yeah. win. And then I also I got my first one the first day. <laughs> it took me. It took me like three, four months. You get. You just walk on. You're like, ah, I got this shit. Get the fuck out of like here. The, I think, like, honestly, I think it was, like, the second or third game. Um, I played with my boys, and one of them was like, yo, just drop. I'll give you my loadout. I'll get the next one. And then I ended up I ended up winning with, like, the most skills. I had, like, six on the first win. Yeah. And when then... I, it's fucking nuts. <laughs> yeah, when, I watch, when I'm watching you guys, you guys are very – you guys move fast, you know, from building yeah. to building. I feel like when when I'm doing duos, I'm like slow and steady, like because it's mm-hmm. it's you know it's 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 a small it's smaller teams, but you know same map, but uh, yeah, it's dude. It's, we, yeah, we kind of got a system. We um, I watch a ton. We watch a ton of streamers. Like yeah. I watch if I, when I'm at work, like I have like my 
my work stuff's on this screen, and then I got like a stream on on this other stream. Sometimes when I'm on like my Zoom, I got the stream on behind. But um, a ton of streamers just to get like their tactics, you know, like J God for like how to move around the map and stuff. And then we pretty much like Garrick and I um, have like a higher KD. Garrick's KD is higher than mine. Right. Um, and Max kind of like the, the sniper stays in the back to make sure that we're clear. So Garrick and I pretty much rush, and then Matt cleans up. But since Matt's the one that's always in the back, he kind of like we kind of leads the team. So like, you know, is that because Matt has the to... PC so he can see farther and all that yeah, stuff? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And he's better with the, he's better with the sniper, so you know he can cover my shoulder if I'm like rushing a rushing a corner or something. So, but like Matt, we you know like we kind of we kind of they do like a, a quick vote, like we're going left to right. I think we should go left, and, you know, and then we go. So yeah. you know, our jumps are always are always like planned and coordinated. So yeah. All right, I sent you some clips, two clips of mine. Yeah. I want you to check them out. Tell me what you think. Uh, yeah. I wish you this to think. I was like, I wish I had audio of myself talking because I got so excited in these when I did these two things. I was like, I couldn't believe it. So watch. Tell hey, me what you think. So I, I, watched both, I watched both of them. Um, <laughs> so the, the assassination, I was like, I never go for assassinations unless, unless I know for sure, like, this is the last person on this team. Right. Like, nobody else can get me. Um, just because the animation is so long, and you can, like, oh, yeah. like if you're if you're going for that assassination, and I was to shoot you, then you're gonna drop, and my teammate is still alive. Yep. Um, so like that's always risky. Uh, the one out of the chopper, though, you need to send you send that into the Warzone clips on YouTube. Like, oh, really? That's such a hard shot, and I know I I've hit it like twice, and I know like when you do it, you're like. You lose your fucking. Oh, mind I lost my mind. I, I, you see, yeah. I, I think I, I think I paused. You saw me just stand there after it because I was like, yeah. I gotta save this clip. How the fuck did I just yeah. do that? I mean, I those are both just duos I played with, and I and I wouldn't have. I normally don't do assassinations in the game, but mm. I was like, I put my ghost on uh, or the dead silence on, and I snuck yeah. up there. He and I, I got hit by a landmine. He didn't he bouncing Betty. He, he didn't do anything, didn't do and I was anything. like, should I try it? Fuck it. And I just did it, and I was like, wow, I can't believe I got away with this. Yeah. So when you, when I saw the explosion, I saw you keep going up, and like you didn't plate. I was like, oh, he's gonna die because that's <laughs> what happens. Like, if I hear that explosion, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna fixate my gun on the door, and I'm just gonna blast you. And like the fact that he never turned around, I was like, this guy's a fucking loser. Like, yeah. you, you turn around. <laughs> You heard the explosion. What do you? What do you? How do you not hear the explosion? You know exactly. That's I was like. I gotta embarrass this guy. And yeah, then, and, yeah. Then, and I don't think he said anything either. I love the death comms. The death comms are sometimes oh, some of my death favorite. Oh, the death comms are great. Some the death comms are great. Some of my favorite. All right. Oh man, They're, the death comms are, are so death comms, and then the comms right after the game where you can like talk. Oh, like talk tons seconds. of shit. Tons of shit. Man, we had a we were on a game. Me, Matt, Garrick, um, and it was like two other teams. Uh, the other team goes down. We, I think we killed the other team, um, and they're, like, spectating us. And then we lost to a guy that was camping. He was a cheater. Cheater. He was off somewhere else, not even in the zone. Um, so, like, we're calling him a cheater, um, all this stuff. The guy, one of the guys from the team that we killed, he's still watching. And he's like, you fucking cheater. I hope, he's like, I hope your mom and your dad die in a fire. Like, he was so mad. Oh, my God. <laughs> Jesus, he was so mad. Wow, yeah. It's, the things the things people say in the defcom sometimes defcom sometimes is not a, not appropriate. Uh, not appropriate. Not dude, appropriate. Shitty but things. They're hilarious. Say. Yeah. Well, before I let you go, uh, I just want to talk about um, foxes. Uh, you know. Yeah. I I I I I know you you made this a few years ago. It was you yeah, know written think- with you and Garrick. I, I really loved it. Uh, I think I've told you this. I've shared it. Um. And I, and I really love, there's a lot of things I love about it, but I really love Reggie's character mm-hmm. because I feel like I've been a little bit of Reggie in terms of like embarrassing someone, you know, trying to mm-hmm. seem cool and then, but really deep down inside, like hurting. And I didn't expect that. Like, I didn't know what to expect when I first started. And yeah. I was like, I, I was like, okay, this is kind of fun. It's comedy, you know, but he's pissing off his friend, his brother. Um, and then, and then he has this, this moment where he's just like, opening up mm-hmm. and I, I and it just it spoke to me in so many different on a, on, a, on a level i was like wow that's that's how i feel sometimes where i'm like i'm covering up how i'm feeling deep down inside yeah. this darkness of suicide and, and and wanting to end it and you know i mean that's a whole thing i can talk about on the other side but like yeah. when you when you wrote when you created this with garrick and you just like what was because this is a, it's a heavy topic 
how did you go about the like the writing of it all? Yeah, so it's actually so it's based off of um, one of my older uh, fraternity brothers in my chapter. Um, we had fell out, so Reggie's character is actually me in, in that, and I, I switched it around to where the older guy was coming to his younger brother. But um, we we had kind of fell out um, over it was something about like running for like a like chapter president or something. He wanted me to run for something, and I was like, I don't I don't have the energy right now. And we fell out over him, him feeling like I wasn't involved, but I was going through, my parents were going through a divorce. I was doing horrible in school. Mm. I had gone through a breakup, um, just completely unhappy, kind of just like floundering around trying to figure out what I wanted to do. And I was like extremely like, I was at points where I was like, yo, if I, if I fail another test, it's, it's, it's over. I'm just going like down some pills. I'm just doing whatever, but I don't, I don't want to be here anymore. Um, and like, no one knew that for probably about a year and we were at um we have this huge step show in the summer um the midwest march now and we were at practice and me and and me and him were like he was the one one of the guys that i came to when i was like i want to join this fraternity so we were cool before this we were like we're like super tight like uh, he's like a true like older brother like calls my mom takes him my mom and stuff like him and my mom are like super close you know um and we're we're at the step practice and we're literally next to each other he's here i'm here not speaking and we hadn't spoken for like a year because we got into this argument fucking nine ten months ago that wasn't worth it you know and um he was like yo he was like yo what's up and i just like kind of brushed it off and he was like yo let's go talk and I'm like we're having this talk and i kind of i just like broke down started crying about i'm going this is like this is the shit that i'm going through and you know like we as men don't talk about anything at all we as black men for sure have to be so strong and so aggressive. We don't talk about shit. Um, and you know, that's, luckily that's starting to change now, yeah. but like we're, we're talking and um, while I'm breaking down about this stuff, he's telling me about how his parents, you know, had an issue that they went through and things that he's gone through too. Um, so it's kind of, it's making me more like, okay, this is okay. I'm not the only one that has these things. If I had, if I had came to him, if I had told him what was up a year ago, which we were close enough to where, I owe I owed it to be comfortable enough to tell it to somebody to get it off my chest. And also I and also I had someone who was close enough to me that I could have put the weight on to help me out. Um so I should have done it a year ago, you know. And we're we we had this moment and like things are good. And then at the same time, uh one of my line brothers who's coming back in, he's coming back in town from studying abroad, no one has seen him. Like I just feel this presence like hugging me from behind and pick me up and he's like, Yo, what's up? And then like he's like, I'm back. And I went right back to just like, you know, no, no emotion from that conversation. We were right back to just like talking shit, like buddy, buddy, like, right. like nothing's wrong. And in like, we were here for like two hours and there's only been like five minutes of me being vulnerable at this, this practice, you know, only one person, it seems only one person knew, only one person knew about that instant until the film got shown. And then luckily enough, um, I think you met Curtis who was at BuzzFeed for a yeah, little bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So Curtis is also like one of my, Curtis is like a little brother to me too. He's also from St. Louis, same fraternity. He had a store and he had a store in Missouri where I flew back to the premiere. So a bunch of my like chapter brothers came up, uh, my family came up, uh, a bunch of my friends came up and so many people saw it and didn't know that I was going to that thing at all because I'm also like a very prideful, very strong person. I don't, the people that know I'm having issues are very, very small yeah, amount of people. Same. Um, so like, all these people, are, we had like a Q&A afterwards and all these people are like kind of like having their own stories where they're saying this and, you know, I had a friend who did this or I'm going through this. But what's crazy is um, my grand, my grandmother was there and her best friend is there. And, and this is like basically my aunt at this point. She, she was, she's been there. She's been there since my mom was a child and my uncle was out. So she's been there with us forever. Um, and she always called me Tris Man. So she was like, Tris Man, I had no idea that you were going through this, you know? She's like, whenever I see you, you're always like laughing and joking. And she's the same way. And she was like, three years ago, I was on the verge of committing suicide. And my brother stopped me. Wow. And this, and my, my grandma's 80. So her friend's like 76 or something at this point. So, you know, like, we don't think about people and people being in their 70s committing suicide, you yeah, know? Yeah, of course. Um, And like my grandma turns, my like she stands, she's standing to give me the story. And when she said it, like my grandma was like, face like all the color just like kind of like rushes out of her face because this is somebody that she's known for 50 something years at this point and had no idea that this woman was 
dealing with suicide also. And that was just like, it was really crazy to have somebody who I've known for so long who I never thought of being upset about anything is also dealing with this, you yeah, know? Yeah. And then there's, I have a cousin that, um, I have a cousin that um, committed suicide when he was younger um, because so, of, he was, he was gay and being made fun about being gay. Yeah. And then the following year, his, his father committed suicide just from dealing with the, the stress, you know, the, the grief, stress, the stress all of it. Yeah. I mean, it, it destroys, it destroys families. Of course. You know? Of course. And, um, after after showing, I showed it to my. I didn't show like the, my mom never saw like any scripts of it. Nothing. She just saw the the film in the premiere, and she was just like, "I'm so sorry," you know. Um, because I tell my mom every like my mom know knew when I lost my virginity. She knows I smoked weed. She knows all these things about. Yeah, me. She yeah. didn't know this, and you know, she was going through a divorce at the time, so I didn't put that. I didn't even let her know. And she's like, "I'm just so sorry that I was like wrapped up in my own life, that I didn't know my child was going through this." And she was like. I cried when I watched it, not because of, not because of what the film was, but because of the thought of having lost you and you never having been able to tell me that the situation was going on, you know? Um, so it's been, it's been great. I mean, so like the, the, I say all that to say like the reception from people that watch it has been good because usually you make something and somebody, I mean, you've made it some of the stuff, you know, somebody's like, oh yeah, that was cool. Yeah, yeah. I liked it, you know, what, whatever. But for someone who like, I watched it and I called somebody or I watched it and I decided to tell my parents that this was going on or I watched it and I feel, I feel seen, you know, that to me is like, my, my goal has always been that I want to talk to people who look like me and let them know that it's okay to, to do what you've done. And it's okay to have the feelings that you have. Yeah. Um, Cause I was never like the most aggressive person growing up. I was, I cried and I was afraid, you know, I was afraid to let people know I was crying. I was afraid to let people know I was emotional, yeah. you know, I dealt with the, oh, you're soft, oh, you're gay because you had emotions, you know, all, all that stuff. Same. So I've always been like, I want I want to make things that make people feel seen and feel validated. So having, doing that and then getting that reception has been, I mean, it's been great. Um, yeah. Garrick and I just, funny enough, Garrick and I just finished a script for another short that we we're trying to shoot this year as well. Yeah, I was about to ask, you know, well, first of all, yeah. I, I, thank you for sharing that story because for I know sure. when, when, when I watched it, I sent it to my dad because I have that same thing with my dad. I tell my father everything, but feelings in that in that way, mm -hmm. I don't tell him because he's Israeli, he's Middle Eastern. You know, it's they're they're very tough people. That's such a shame. And yeah. but but he's opened up. You know, I'm, I've been having this process with my father where he's opened up and he's accept. You know, and it, it's not that he's not accepting of it. He just like he's just like you know, be tough, be tough. And it's like I am tough, yeah. but I have I have I have these thoughts and. You know, they're terrible thoughts. You know, moms died and, you know, I just, the, the things that we, that I was used to is not the same. And I'm just having, it's, it's in, even though it was 17, 16 years ago, it's still fucking with me, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. And like, I don't know if therapy, you know, I need to go to therapy. I need to do all that stuff. But, you know, I, I thank you for, for right making that because I really did enjoy it. And I'm excited that you and Garrett, I was about to ask you, what do you got? Are you making, yeah. you got something in the works? What's going on? Yeah. So Garrett and I just finished, um, we're in the, like the last draft of this uh, short called Ride Home. Um, and it's, it's, it's very different from Foxes. So it's, it's an attempt to be funny. Garrett and I had this conversation for a long time about like, uh, gentrification kind of started with artists, right? Like yeah. artists were the ones that first gentrified places. So, the scripts of um takes place. This uh, private school kid gets picked up by his best friend, who's a gang member, and his gang member friend is talking about gentrification came from like quirky like white guys, and he names like uh, he's like if it wasn't for Wes Anderson, like South Central wouldn't be gentrified, and they're just going into how like uh, when you look at like the artisanal coffee shops and all the stuff, it's all people who look like they stepped right out of like Grand Budapest Hotel, like all these <laughs> movies, you know, uh, Moonrise Kingdom, all this stuff. Um, yeah. <laughs> so they're having like this conversation. And he's like, yo, you guys are like gang members. How do you, why, why are you watching Wes Anderson? And they're like, well, we can still be educated. We still be like gang members and be world leaders of art and stuff. Um, and then there's like a, a, a fight that breaks out with other, with um, a rival gang. And um, they pretty much drop him off to like, they get him back to safety and like leave him alone. So then once the fight breaks out, it like switches to this shot where like, you're just seeing like very West Anderson, like a uh, symmetrical shot of like him going through the day, like going through the realization of all the stuff going on. And then he's back in the classroom with like all his white classmates talking about like, 
you know, all this bullshit and everything. Yeah. And then the teacher's like, today we're going to look at uh, bilateral symmetry and architecture and all, all these things. So, and he's like, we're going to start with one of my favorite movies, um, Grand Budapest Hotel. <laughs> and then it kind of just comes with <laughs> It kind of just comes full circle to him. And he's just like, he just at this point, he just like vomits because he's like, <laughs> he's mad that his friend was right about the situation. Yeah. But then he's also mad that like it came full circle into the classroom that he doesn't want to be in. He's dealing with the realities of all these things coming down around him. Um, so we're, we're working on getting that up now. Uh, right. And you haven't shot it yet? Get, You're on your way shooting it? We haven't we haven't shot it yet. Okay. We're, um, we're working on getting a DP and everything now. I'm nice. um, getting it, getting it, cast it. Nice. I told Garrick and I told the producer, um, I like, I will not, I like, I can't finance another movie. I was like, after Foxes, I'm done paying for things to be made. So we got to find a way to make the money for it. Um, so that'll be the next thing we'll be doing, like a GoFundMe or whatever to get that made, get that out. Okay. Uh, hopefully that, hopefully that comes through. And I'll try oh, to help you out too, man. I, I, I know some people that Thank may you. invest in shit. So. Thank you. Appreciate it. Outside of that, um, I'm working on a documentary that I want to do that I've been sitting with for a minute. Um, it's called uh, Birthdays Are For Mothers. And um, so for me, like growing up, like my birthday was always it was always celebrated by my mom. Like I, I'm sing- my mom's a single parent, you know, so like it's always been like for her, it's been like a celebration of me, you know, having a birthday, but also it's been a celebration of me like surviving um i was born a twin and only one of us made it through the pregnancy so like one one, one of us made it through the birth so i was born a twin also you know oh shit i'm bl- bullshit happens in society yeah. like to, to black men so like yeah. surviving all these things like just living has always been like the celebration and i started thinking about how much of like black like black males birthdays for their moms are just like I made it to another year of my son breathing and being free, you know? So I had this idea of, I want to shoot various moms around the country um, with like a portrait of their son and them give their favorite story of whichever birthday stood out the most of them for their child or their favorite memory of their child. And um, I don't know when I'm going to start shooting it, but I want, being from St. Louis, I really want to reach out to uh, the mother of Mike Brown and see if I can get her to be in it as well. Cause I think that would be very, very, I think that would be very positive. That'd be very Absolutely. big to have her connected to that. And um, I want the way that I want to present it is I want to shoot my own mom um, for, for like the web release, but I don't want her in the, in like the initial showing yeah. of it okay. because I want her there and I want to, I want to do our segment live at the end of it. I love that. I love Thank that. You. I think that's great. I'm excited Thank for that. You. I'm excited for all of it, man. This is fantastic. Well, I've kept you on for close to an hour when I said I would keep you for 45. So oh, I, it's all good. I don't want to keep you from, uh, you know, killing some people in uh, in Warzone. <laughs> yeah. We need to hop on together and play some as well. Um, but, dude, thank you so much for joining me. I really appreciate it. For sure. For sure. Thank you for having me. No problem, man.